Hey friends, welcome to Gardening with Creekside. Today we are up at the Chicken Coop Gardens uh, here along the new woodland garden that I am creating right off of the Chicken Coop. What we're going to be focusing on today is I have three containers that we are going to pot up. Yes, I have a group of three unique stone containers. This, this is the rope and weave style and it is the same container right in three different sizes so that is a great uh, tip option for you when you are in an area maybe like I am here in the woods uh, yes I have stuff in the ground but the reason that I am using containers in this area is because when I clean out the chicken coop I have to pull the John Deere right up here and so I can't put plants in the ground because they'll get run over by the John Deere these three containers are going to be kind of tucked up out of the way. If I were to ever need to move them because of cleaning out the chicken coop, then I can do that. That is certainly an option. So whether you have, you're trying to get a garden underneath some trees or it's, maybe it's on gravel, right? There's somewhere that you really can't plant directly in the landscape, but you still want to have a garden there. Use your containers. That is the beautiful thing about it. A great way to do it take any kind of worry fuss as far as design out of the question is to use that same container in different sizes right the same style the same uh, pattern the same color use that together as a group and then just stagger them however you want to my mama is a queen of this in fact she was down here yesterday kind of helping me and giving me some ideas we talked it through I'm using the rope and weave, but like as far as like our unique stone, remember we got a great order in from unique stone back in the fall. We have several different styles of pieces that you can easily group together in this fashion. This is just the shape that worked well for me. There's one that's called like the Beau Jardinier. I love those containers. They are so cute, but they're a little skinnier and more columnar. And here it just, I don't think it would look be the right size for this space but i love those still come in three different sizes then there is uh it's called the dopio and so it is kind of short and round very nice and um, low profile so that would be a great option for you as well again comes in three different sizes and then if you want to go big right the jumbo jardiniers these are nice clean classic containers that the really large jumbo they're all called jumbo jardiniers they just have different sizes in there but one of the biggest ones you literally could plant a tree in it it is huge but you ha have all those different options and you can pair them however it is that you want what I did do ahead of time is each of these containers is sitting on um, a piece of stone because I have found over at the pines where all of our other unique stone is, it is the winter obviously, right? And we are historically very wet here in the winter um, and our ground is absolutely saturated. When some of these containers, the way that they're making contact on the ground and the ground is so saturated, they're not draining. So I could have like one of those jumbo jardiniers, it was like halfway full of water just from rain because it was directly on the contact of with the ground. So I went ahead and put, um, these were just some stone pavers that we had left over. You could use bricks, you could use kind of whatever. If you had little feet risers, you could certainly use that. But I would just kind of encourage you to do something so it's not sitting directly on the ground because in case it's like with me and that your ground is saturated, that way the water can um, easily drain out of your pot because you do not want to flood your plants. What we are going to be planting today, uh, really fun, two strawberries and a perennial. What I'm going to do is kind of set the camera up so I can show you, but we're going to do something a little unique here. We are going to turn one of these unique stone containers into a self-watering container. Yes, that is right. We're going to take a traditional pot, turn it into a self-watering container. I'm going to show you how we're going to do it. The way that we're going to turn a unique stone, traditional pottery, right? traditional drainage hole in it absolutely uh, classic of what you're used to with a container the way we're going to turn it into a self-watering container is we are going to use the proven winners this is the aquapots the insert um, for their aquapot lights we did one of these containers at the end of the summer towards the end of the summer um, last year it's just sitting right beside of me and so far it has done really really well so we're going to try it with a unique stone piece 
and the hydrangea because hydrangeas of course do uh, love their water and consistent water so we're going to try it with that the really neat thing about these inserts is that, again you can use it with any traditional container that you have the only thing you're going to need to be aware of is the size basically this is eight inches tall so the bowl part is eight inches tall and about 13 inches and a quarter wide now the reason that i'm telling you that is because uh, the original plan was that i was going to use an insert in the medium size bowl and the large bowl when i put the insert into the medium bowl there was hardly any room that was going to be left with any kind of soil so the insert was going to be too big for this container however with the large rope and weave it is a great fit so it will work really well be uh, aware of the size of your container versus this now it's okay that if your container is really big and you have extra room around the side that is not a problem because in this system the bottom is completely solid right so it is a traditional bowl there is no hole in the bottom of this it is just a regular old bowl then you have if you're familiar with aqua pots then you have more of, of, along the lines of what you are familiar with right so you have this is your soil tube it has the slits the water can get to it soil goes on top of here the way that water will come out of the bowl so that way you don't have to worry about being too much water in here are there are channels right here that when the bowl fills up with water water will come down those channels and then come out and then leave the hole of your container like it traditionally would so that is uh, the deal with that i've got my little plastic uh insert you know like the little packaging so we're going to take that off and then go ahead and it just fits right and snug right down in there and then you take your insert and then you plop it in on top depending of where you want your water tube just be aware of that and this does telescope so if you have um, i will need it a little bit taller for this one because this container is tall also um, i don't really like the blue flower because it stands out so thankfully the little blue flower will just screw off and you can um you don't have a blue flower sticking out of your hydrangea so easy peasy on that aspect of it and then where like i said wherever it is that you think you're going to want to come to with your hose just put it in that position i'm probably going to want to go just a little bit off to the center because um, i have a hose link that's going to be that is directly in front of me and i can it'll be easy to come around to this side and put it right there now once you do that we're just going to go ahead and pot these up like normal uh, how do i use uh, pot up my containers well it is very easy i have a very simple method that i use i use a great quality compost like the land and sea and then of course my proven winners potting soil i love that potting soil so we're going to use that and then the biotone fertilizer great for your healthy root systems uh, we're going to get all that together and get these babies planted what I've done um, on my two the small and the medium planter I went ahead and filled the bottom one-third with my land and sea compost that is the tip that I learned several years ago reading a magazine and I absolutely find it phenomenal and does a great job uh, maintaining the health and the vigor of my plants so you fill the bottom third with compost and then you're going to come back and you're going to use your potting soil for the rest of it what we're going to do in the small one i am a huge fan huge fan of linton roses hellebores i was over at the nursery uh, walking and i came across this is the ice and roses rose that is the color so ice and roses is going to be a uh, a series a line of hellebores big fan of ice and roses red did that on my front porch but this rose is absolutely stunning it has some cream it's got some pink it is beautiful i'm going to plant it in the small one because i just want some color and uh, then what i'll do is this this spring i'll probably take it out plant it in the landscape and then i'll put an annual in there to give me a pop of color so i'm gonna grab my biotone and we're gonna get this baby planted i 
pulled out the hellebore and you will notice that this is pretty root bound i would say healthy healthy root system which is gorgeous because you've got a beautiful plant up here but we need to kind of break these roots up just a little bit the reason that we break up the roots a little bit is to encourage them to go out if they are really you know tied really tightly around one another right here then maybe they could get um, not as much nutrients as they need so i just take my hori hori and i just very gently do this y'all i promise you are not going to hurt the plant this is good right this is helpful for the plant um, i know some people have a hard time either pruning or you know breaking up the roots a little bit and i'm not coming in here and being horrible with it but yes as one viewer said, the ice pick method. That is right. That is what I'm doing. So then you just decide which side you want your plant uh, to face out. I think I'm going to go uh, just this way instead of just straight on because we've got beautiful flowers here, lots of beautiful buds. So we're just going to come in and bring it down like this. So then once we place it in there, we're just going to come back with our potting soil and fill in all around. Brenda got my container. I wasn't thinking and I gave it to her. So I'm just using my hands and getting in there and uh, yep, add it in. So we're gonna add all the soil so that you have no roots exposed to air. That's a, a big thing that you wanna make sure you've got nice, good coverage. And then what we're gonna do is once the soil's in there, I always like to come back with a nice top layer of the compost again, do a little top dress. That way it feeds the plants and it uh, just provides a really nice cover for it. The hellebore is in, she is good to go. Once we get everybody potted up, we'll come back and water. But I love hellebores because they are one of the absolute first perennials to bloom in your garden. Here we are beginning of February and she is in full bloom. I have got Lenten roses all over the gardens that are in gorgeous bloom. They tend to be deer resistant and rabbit resistant because of their tough foliage. They are the easiest no fuss plants. If you are at a garden center, I've even seen them at grocery stores. If you are anywhere and you see a beautiful Lenten rose, a hellebore, it's the same thing. Um, and you have a semi-shaded area, this is gonna get morning sun and then it's going to be in the afternoon shade. Also, once I move her back into the woods later on in the spring, she'll be in a more shady area right now in the winter sun, but she will be absolutely fine. Um, just gorgeous. And they come in a huge range of colors, whites, pinks, reds, even yellows, dark, dark purple, almost like a black by colors. You get double blooms, single blooms, you name it. Hellebores come in it. They are a great option. I'm telling you, if you have uh, like a shade, part shade garden, you need to add some hellebores to them. You will love them. Speaking of shade, we are going to put in a new shrub. This is from Proven Winners. This is the Sweet and Low Sarcococa. This is a great shrub that is an evergreen. It is going to be more on your shade side. So it can go anywhere from full shade to part shade. Here in this spot, this is going to get morning sun and then it's going to be in the shade in the afternoon. So it's going to get about four to five hours of morning sun and then in the shade. I got these from Proven Winners um, back last year in, gosh, I guess it was like the um, early spring. They have stayed in this deer, uh, this one gallon container for the almost like almost an entire year tough as nails. You give it too much water, it's fine. You forget to water it, it's fine. It is deer proof, evergreen. It is covered in buds. They will bloom uh, these beautiful fragrant flowers in early spring that attract those pollinators. Gorgeous glossy green leaves, so fun. So we are going to plant that one in this container. Now we're going to try a little trick here. I learned this trick, oh gosh, I don't know. A while ago and sometimes I forget to use it so I just taken my, my plant out and I'm just gonna set it right here off to the side I'm gonna take my container and I'm going to uh, put it down in the pot now it's a little low so what I'm gonna do is add some potting soil nope 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 I got to keep the dog off of it that's not hers this is mine you can have it later um, add some soil 
so that I get it at the right height, right? Bring that back. I'm gonna zhuzh it just a little bit to get my biotone and the compost. There we go. Take the container. Put it where I want my plant. Put it right there. I'm gonna try to put the soil around the, the edge of the pot and not inside, but if some, if some goes in, it's all right. The idea here is that we're going to make a form and we'll just be able to slip the sweet and low straight in here. And we won't have to make a mess like I did with the Linton Rose as far as um, trying to get the soil all the way around. So you just wanna come in and press it really nice and firm. I'm getting the soil that was in the container out and push it down. It helps if your soil is slightly damp. This is not bone dry. It is just slightly damp, like I said. So we go there and then we gently pull, do a little twist, pull it out, take your plant. This is not root bound at all. And we slip it in. Ha ha. There you go. Get her twisted right. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna go that way. Now, sarcococa is a great ground cover um, because it is nice and low. About 18 to 24 inches tall maybe 30 inches tall, and then two to three feet wide, which is fantastic for your shade garden. It will do some slight suckers, so it will spread. So it works great as a ground cover. If you don't want that, then put it in a container like I am doing, or once I take this out and I put it, um, you know, this could be a couple of years from now, and I put it in the landscape, then it will spread and do a nice ground cover in your shade garden, which is absolutely lovely. So now, again, what I'm gonna do, come back with my compost and then top dress it, and then we're gonna plant the uh, Ruby Slippers Oak Leaf Hydrangea. Now we're going to turn our attention to planting the hydrangea. As I mentioned, we are going to be planting a ruby slippers oak leaf hydrangea. I do not have any oak leaves in this garden. I have several panicles, I have several serratas, and I have several macrophyllas. So we are going to do an oak leaf. We're going to switch it up. I love ruby slippers because it uh, is going to be on more of the petite side of an oak leaf hydrangea. Eventually, I am going to have to move it out of this container because it will get too big. If I can get two years with this and it stays happy and I'm not having to constantly water it, then I will feel very happy. At that point, I will then take it and move it into the garden. If you're going to plant shrubs, perennials in containers, one thing that I have learned just from experience is that you may, <laughs> she just stole my pot is that you may want to consider the shape of your container. When you have um, a wider at the top and more narrow at the bottom, it makes it easier to get the plant out because the root system will just come right out, right? It's just the simple um, logistics of the shape of the pot. I have found that some of the more challenging pots are the ones, and I don't know what you would call it, but where they're like wide at the bottom, maybe they're like an egg shape where they're like wide in the center and then they start to come back up at the top. Speaking of egg, somebody laid an egg. And then they come back at the top and they're more narrow and they come in. So the neck, the opening is narrow and then you've got a wide bottom. You can't pull that plant out because the opening is smaller than the widest part of your container. It is just something to think about. I'm not saying you can't do it, but you're gonna have to really like work the plant and cut some stuff out. It is more challenging to do. What we're gonna do here, because we have the aquapot insert, I'm not gonna put compost down first. I'm gonna put the uh, Proven Winners Potting Soil down in it first, fill up the soil tube, and then I'm gonna put a little bit of compost and then we'll get it planted. I've got the soil in there. 
filled up the soil tube and then I had to make sure because the insert is a little bit smaller than the container to make sure that the soil went all the way around between the insert and the container. So that way there is as much soil as possible in here because the roots are still going to go down. We're going to do our little bit of a shake of compost. We're going to add in a couple of good handfuls of biotone fertilizer. Work that in. So what we're going to do is pull her out. Let Britta come get it. Now you'll notice that the, the root ball is a little bit higher than my container right so I'm going to just move her off to the side just a minute pull back some of that soil compost biotone make sure she's turned the way that I want her to be turned and then nestle her in there perfect she needed to go down just a little bit not terribly just a little bit. Now, what we're going to do is just come back with our potting soil, same thing, fill in around, and then we're going to top dress with the land and sea. All right, Ruby Slippers is planted and she is top dressed with a land and sea. Yes, for now you can see the, the water tube sticking out, the fill tube, it's fine. As soon as we get some warmer temperatures and she flushes out, that is going to disappear. That does not bother me at all. With your oak leaf hydrangeas, oak leaves bloom on old growth. What does that mean? That means do not prune it uh, really with an oak leaf the best is don't prune it at all. You want to put it in a spot where it can grow to its you know, potential size, right? If you do have to prune it, you're going to want to prune it immediately after it blooms. Ruby Slippers is going to do gorgeous creamy white flowers, nice and long, kind of similar to a panicle as far as elongated blooms on them, and then they will turn a beautiful ruby color. Um, so you're going to want to prune it pretty soon after it finishes blooming because you need to have plenty of time for it to set its new flower buds for the next year. So a ruby slippers, um, an oak leaf hydrangea, for me in North Carolina, I would not want to prune my ruby slippers or any oak leaf hydrangea past July. I would want to prune it um, yeah, no later than July. That way it has all of July, August, and September to put on new growth and new buds for the next year. That way you get beautiful flowers. So what I'm gonna do is just clean up everything, get everybody watered in. I am gonna water in the ruby slippers because uh, we need to get the soil nice and wet and then we will fill up uh, the insert as well. And then today's project will be complete. Okay, my friends, today's project is complete. We got all three containers planted. They are watered, they are happy, and now we just sit back and let them grow and develop and be beautiful. I am excited about this. It's gonna be a really fun addition to the garden. And don't, 
Don't ever worry about adding, you know, containers directly into the garden. It elevates the garden. It brings a different kind of color, a different texture, a different, uh, just a whole different element when you add containers directly to your garden. Really fun. That ruby slippers probably stand there for at least two years. Get nice and big and developed and will be beautiful. The sweet and low be about the same thing probably. You'll know that it's time to get them out of the containers when you can't keep enough water on them. That's the beautiful thing about using the aquapot insert is that that hydrangea is going to get consistent water uh, throughout the entire growing season. So once you notice that the plant is nice and large and developed, you can't keep it watered enough. Uh, if you try to find some loose soil around the edges and it's just solid roots, then you know it's going to be time to take it out, add it to the garden, and then you get to replant your containers. That Ice and Roses Rose will go into the landscape this spring, and then I'll pop in some sort of flowering annual. Uh, most likely, I'm thinking like a, a Rocapuco Double Impatient, uh, you know, a, a Broalia, something that's more on the shade loving side that still gives me a nice pop of color, and it'll be really, really fun. If you're interested in those inserts, we have them both online and at the Garden Center when we open up on February the 17th, so you can grab those. So start measuring your containers, see which ones the insert will fit into, and start making plans. As always, we so appreciate you. We hope you found this fun, informative, and inspirational. Y'all have a great day and we'll see you in the next video. Bye friends.